save Detroit. Detroit may be down, but it's not out. There are still many splendid events, places, and buildings here that make Detroit a wonderful city. For instance, the yearly Detroit International Auto Show is one of the most prestigious in the world. We have several new Detroit stadiums like Comerica Park, Ford Field, and Joe Louis Arena. Many large companies have moved into Detroit, like General Motors, Low Campbell Ewald, Quicken Loans, and Blue Cross Blue Shield, just to name a few. But as everyone knows, an uphill battle is being waged right here, right now, in Detroit. A battle that could use your help. It's not for the areas you see or hear about, and it's not to help big business. It's to help people that live in the neighborhoods that surround downtown. Neighborhoods that you would not believe exist in today's modern world, right here in the middle of civilization. Please take a few minutes to view for yourself that which must be seen to be believed. At one time, respectable, hardworking men and women lived in these homes. These were good houses built to raise families and teach kids the values of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They came from down south, they immigrated from other countries, they came to Detroit to live out the American dream. And for a while, it was a proud community surrounded by the Great Lakes. Detroit, rich with history, was once considered one of the greatest cities in America. First to have paved roads, first to become an epicenter of manufacturing, bothering in the first assembly lines and bringing in a new era with the advent of the automobile. Detroit became known as the Motor City. But look at Detroit now. What could have caused such devastation? Abandoned houses, burned out homes, and skeletons of neighborhoods are found everywhere. It didn't take long in the past 30 years to become America's poorest city with over 70,000 vacant homes. It is not our intent to analyze whether it started with a gas crisis, foreign automakers, racial prejudices, or obsolete ideology. The fact is, Detroit is not alone in its blight. Abandoned buildings happen for many reasons. Drug pushers, gangs, and all kinds of criminal activities are drawn to these types of areas, furthering the exodus of good people and helping the continuation of the downward spiral. We want to stop this. There are still many good neighborhoods not yet affected by blight in Detroit. Blight is a disease that can be stopped. Michigan's Governor Rick Snyder and Detroit's new mayor Mike Duggan are rekindling new hope and working through this country's first bankrupt city with tremendous effort, but it is a huge undertaking and it needs everyone's help. Many across the nation and even the world look down on Detroit as a casualty of its own making, and until recently cared little. Despite these challenges, the strength inherent in its people's tenacity to keep fighting will improve the city. Detroit is not alone in fighting blight. It is in Chicago, New York, and bustling cities large and small. We are starting right here in the poorest city in America, Detroit. The owners of these abandoned buildings do not have the money to demolish them. We would like to do it for them at no charge. Our team is capable of demolishing single-family homes very fast, efficiently, and most important, inexpensively. We have all the tools, machines, and legal knowledge to get the job done, one house at a time. Our beginning goal is modest, to knock down 50 abandoned homes, remove all the rubble, and fill in the basements with good soil leaving behind a field of dreams. No more eyesores, dangerous hangouts, or fire hazards. We're opening the land up to welcome in future growth. Our starting goal is to raise $250,000. Every small achievement made will have a timeless effect in the neighborhoods of Detroit, and consequently, could become the template used to battle blight across the United States of America, and perhaps the world. Please, help us make this possible.